Today, I stay in a traditional Korean house in a traditional Korean village and try one of the most famous dishes in South Korea. Come with me and let's explore Jeonju. Let's do it. I've just arrived actually at my accommodation and I'm still pinching myself a little bit. Sometimes you just need to treat yourself and I've seen quite a few of these traditional style little villages. I thought it was about time that we stayed in one. Let me show you around. The place is right on this absolutely stunning street. I mean, look at it. And the guest house is right here. You can't pick a better spot. And look at this. Traditional style wooden, white walls and wooden beams. And the first place you come to is my room. Welcome. I know what you're thinking. This place is far too big for one person, and you're right. Actually sleeps four. You have a double bed, and you have two futons. So it is a four person. It's probably the biggest room on the property, and therefore, obviously, the most expensive. But it was the only one available, and sometimes you just got to treat yourself and not worry about the money. It costs 150,000 won per night. I absolutely love the style, again, with the white walls and the varnished wood. Got a nice big sofa, wall mirror, you can say hello to me. Huge TV, which I don't think I'll be watching. I don't really watch TV these days. You've got yourself a little kitchen, and then, well, the bedroom is on the mezzanine level, up in the rafters. Let's head up. Let me show you. Up the steps. This is going to be fun if I need to pee in the night. <laughs> Can you think of a better place to sleep? Up in the beams, the wooden beams. It's all very well having a nice bed, but is it comfortable? Oh. Yes, it is comfortable. Oh, it smells good as well, actually. And the all-important test of the pillow. Oh, yes. I'm going to sleep well tonight, that is for sure. And I guess it's a little bit of a cop-out not having the proper traditional guest house with the futon. But you know what, guys? I sleep so badly from moving around, moving around, moving around. I just thought, if you're going to treat yourself, at least make it comfortable. So I have the upmarket traditional guest house in the traditional style end of town. So, yeah, I'm doing it my way. But if you wanted to, in this little cupboard tucked away under the stairs, you do have two futons. So these get laid out on the floor, so that's why there's a big floor area. You would sleep down here, right on the floor. You get the futon that goes on the bottom. But this is what I mean, guys. This is the pillow. And normally it's made either from straw or rice. And it's quite hard. And I like the idea of it. I mean, obviously, the futon won't be on the floor, but I like the idea of it, but there's no chance I'm sleeping all night on that. It's like a little brick, but if you like a hard pillow, maybe it's for you. So that <laughs> can go back in there and stay in there. I think it's worth the money. It also includes breakfast, so he brings breakfast here in the morning. Oh, it's time to get out onto the streets and try our first delicacy here in Jeonju, the famous choco pie. All right, we have choco pie, which, well, apparently originated in Jeonju, so obviously we have to have it. I got it from a bakery called PNB. There's actually a few of them located around the Hanok village, so I just went to the closest one. They have a whole variety from white chocolate to strawberry to matcha, but of course, if you're going to have it the first time, you have to have the original. And essentially, it looks like a dense cake, and in the middle, I know, there's like a, a cream and some jam, and then it's dipped on the outside with some chocolate. But they've conveniently left a little place in the middle so you don't get the melted chocolate on your fingers as it starts to melt as you hold it. But just look at that. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Let's try it. Well, let me break it in for you guys to see. There you go. So you can see on the inside, it is dense. It's definitely not a cake, but it's also not a biscuit either, but you can see that, that jam and that cream on the inside. Mm. Very chocolatey. It is cakey. I think for me, it's the jam that I really like in there. But there's also a crunch, and I think that crunch is coming from chopped walnuts. There's some chopped walnuts in there as well. I like that. And just 2,301. Not a bad snack.
Yeah, I just continued my first night here, soaking up the atmosphere, walking around the city. Such a nice atmosphere in this city. So pretty, and people walking around in traditional dress. And it wasn't long before I stumbled across something interesting. A traditional Korean games playground where these two girls challenged me to play. Right, I'm in the traditional Korean playground. And we've got some games here and these, <laughs> these two ladies are trying to teach me how to do it. But it is definitely harder than it looks. <laughs> right, you ready? Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> there you go. I look like an idiot dancing around, but... Oh, I've lost my skills. Right. Oh. So it's a battle now. Right, let's try it this way. <laughs> I hope you saw that. What is what is the name of this game? Name, my name. Yeah. Si Chek. Si Yon Chek. Uh, hey Im Kim. Hey Im Kim. And this? Kungi. 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 Okay, another game. Show me how to play it. So you roll it out. Pick up one. Jeez. So you have to throw one up and pick the other while the first one is still in the air. And if you drop it, it's the other person's go and you get points <laughs> for how many you pick up. Hey, look it. She's pretty good. In fact, they're both pretty good. Oh, yeah. This will be good. OK. Let me just place the camera so you can... I don't know why I'm placing the camera, to be honest. Because it's not going to... Ah. Pick that one up. Why? Yeah. So I have to go up. OK. And now, so, I've, so I did the first one. The first one is easy. You have nothing in your hand. Now you need to keep one in your hand, throw one up and pick up another. So, oh, there you go. Now I've got to keep two in my hand. Three. Oh. OK. But not as fast as these lot. All right, here we go, last one. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Not so bad after all. Yeah. <laughs> they leave defeated. <laughs> I wish. But so much fun and a good way to interact with locals. If you can't speak the same language, you can definitely play the same game. After that, I've worked up another appetite. So, onto the main street in Jeonju and time for another snack. Now, being the foodie capital of South Korea, we can't come to Jeonju without trying its food. I was just walking past this place and I smelt grilling cheese. And if you didn't know, cheese is actually super popular in South Korea. So I think we should try one. Can I have one grilled cheese? One. Yeah. Cheese. yeah, 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 thank you. Onto the hot plate. What smells better than grilling cheese? All right, guys, time to try the cheese. Everyone else is just eating on the street, so why not? I'll do the same, crouch down here next to the street. It looks absolutely incredible. Just look at the color, the golden, crisp, toasty outside of that cheese. It's called Imsil cheese. It's the most famous cheese, one of the most popular cheese, probably both are true, in South Korea. I haven't tried it yet. So it's gonna be hot, we need to be careful. Mmm. Mmm, okay. You can just see the texture on the inside. It's soft, of course, where it's been melted. The outside is an amazing crunch, golden, savory crunch. Mm. For me, it's a cross between halloumi and mozzarella. Maybe slightly sweeter than mozzarella, but it's got that saltiness and maybe more the texture of a grilled halloumi. Very, very tasty. Sorry, a wasp is flying around my, <laughs> around my feet, but it's very, very tasty, a great, okay. I was trying to go up my jeans. Anyway, it's very, very tasty. A great street snack. Mm. 4,001, delicious. I've said before, one of my favorite things to do when I arrive in a new place is to just go out for a walk. Don't really do much, just walk around and see where it takes you. And Jeonju is no exception for that. Such an amazing place to walk around, especially as the sun is setting. Sure, the weather isn't quite as good as I would choose, but it doesn't take away from the beauty of this place, and it's rapidly becoming one of my favorite places in South Korea.
All right, guys. Just got in from a walk, an evening walk around the village. If it's pretty by day, it's even better by night and quiet as well. It seems like everyone disappears. I'm not sure where they go to because there are guest houses around here, but the streets are so quiet and so peaceful. All the buildings are lit up. Really, really, really beautiful. I'm so glad I came here and stayed in this place as well, right in the center of the Hanok village. Anyway, pretty tired now, so I'm gonna get some sleep and then I'll see you guys in the morning for breakfast. Good night. Good morning, guys. It's time for a simple breakfast of toast, fruit, and a black sesame soup. Of course, with a cup of coffee. What more do you need to set yourself up for the day of exploring and eating in Jeonju? So it was time to head out, and after a little walk around the city, it was time to go and try one of the most famous dishes in South Korea. Right, finally, it's lunchtime. And if you're not that familiar with Korean cuisine, one dish that you probably have heard of is bibimbap. And actually, it originated in Jeonju. At this restaurant, Hankook Jib was one of the first restaurants to serve bibimbap in both hot stone and in normal style. So, if you're going to try bibimbap in Jeonju, this is obviously the place to come. Let's go check it out. Menu-wise, guys, of course, you have the bibimbap, and you have three styles, it looks like. You have the raw bibimbap with raw beef, and then you have two cooked styles. I also read that the beef rib soup is particularly good, and I really justify two main courses. Hmm, let's see. All right, guys, food has landed at the table, and there's a lot of it, as you can see, with all the sides and the bibimbap. Now, let's take a look at the bibimbap first. It's a pretty good portion, I must admit. You can see the raw beef in the middle with a few little pine nuts. I didn't expect to see pine nuts. Maybe ginkgo nuts? I'm not entirely sure. But you've got a little bit of egg, some sliced radish, mushrooms, some, I'm not entirely sure what that is actually, but sliced courgette, some chili sauce, and other types of greens in there as well. I mean, it's absolutely packed full of veg, but that veg is on a bed of rice, if I can get in there and see. It is on a bed of rice that you can see. So it is a substantial dish. It's not just veg and meat. The idea is, that you get it all stirred in and mixed in and then you eat it like that. I said that a bibimbap originated here. Jeonju bibimbap originated here in this restaurant in 1952. And there's a little text that says the special thing about it is the homemade soy sauce and the red hot, so let's see, but red hot chili sauce as well. Looking forward to trying that. Of course, you've got all of the sides as well. I mean, the standard, we're used to this now, right? You've got the kimchi, you've got the daikon, you've got another pickled vegetable here. You've got steamed baby pak choy, black beans, and then actually, I'm not entirely sure what this is, but it's very jelly-like, if I can just give it a wiggle for you. I mean, look at that. It, maybe it's made out of rice flour, tapioca flour, but it looks like a set. Not jelly, but, well, you can see the texture, and it's got chili and spring onions and sesame seeds on top. And of course, nothing in South Korea comes without rice. And did we order the beef rib soup? You bet we ordered the beef rib soup. Apparently, as I say, it's delicious, so can't pass up that. Need to show you guys, that's my excuse. We have an absolute feast, and you're meant to mix it, I believe, mix it with the chopsticks, and then eat it with the spoon. So, let's give that a good old mix, because you want everything mixed through. And there's bean sprouts in there as well, my favorite. Like I say, everything has to be mixed through, and if you do it perfectly, you get everything in there in equal proportion. Right, all mixed in perfectly, as you can see. Broken up all of that meat and all of that veg is just mixed through that rice. Absolutely perfect and ready to eat. Let's get a, well, maybe a bit too much there, but let's get a big mouthful with a little bit of everything in there. Look at that. I mean, it's absolutely packed with veg and we've got some of that raw beef in there too. Mm. The flavor is good. The spiciness comes straight through. That meat, it's soft, it's sweet, it just melts in your mouth. You get the mushroomy flavor coming through because all of those flavors individually are quite strong. The thing that jumps out most is the texture. Because some of the veg is steamed and boiled, some of the veg is stir-fried off, and then some of it is just essentially raw. It's just been cooked so fast, you get the crunch, 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 and then it's just held together with that rice. Super delicious. Mm. I think, with a little bit of kimchi, we'll cut through that richness perfectly. 
Oh yeah. Mm. That's good kimchi. That might be one of the spiciest kimchi's that I've had, but damn, it is good. Of 70 years of flavour and tradition in a bowl of bibimbap. How cool is that? I've had bibimbap before, I had it in Seoul. And actually, I think that one came with a raw egg yolk on top of it, and then you mix that through. But I don't remember it being as good as this. This one is amazing. And what well, the thing I love in there, actually, is the mushroom. The mushroom has so much meaty flavour coming through. Super delicious. But the quality of the beef... The quality of the beef is high. And it has to be. When it's raw like that, it has to be good quality. And certainly it is. Anyway, let's have a little bit of the pickled chilli radish. Love it. And this video is already long, so let's swap out the bibimbap. And let's bring in the beef rib soup. The broth looks amazing. And you've got huge chunks of beef in there, on the bone, of course, so you know flavour is going to be pretty good on there because it's the bone with the marrow in as well. And that marrow is going to bring out so much richness. What well, looks like a little dried Chinese plum in there as well, maybe. But that is literally it. And that obviously is what the rice comes with, because there's no way you need rice with the bibimbap. It's already in there. So, let me try the broth. That might even be better than the bibimbap. I know they're famous for the bibimbap here, but that broth is absolutely stunning. My God. The power of that broth. It reminds me of, like, the British roast dinner where you have beef and that bit on the outside of the beef where it just chars a little bit too much in the oven, but it's so beefy and so flavorful. The broth has that flavor, so I don't know if they roast them first, the ribs first, and then put them into the broth, but wow. All right. Oh, they are hefty, hefty ribs, actually. I mean, look at the size of it. It's like a, must be a short rib, right? Pretty big, but full of fat and therefore full of flavor. Let's get my gnashes on that. Mm. Yeah, it tastes just like that broth. Very beefy, soft, melt in the mouth. Very fatty, the fat just dissolves as you put it into your mouth, but the flavor of it, amazing. What a lunch. They told me Jeonju was the foodie capital of South Korea. These two dishes, I'm a happy boy. We've had some pretty good pork and beef broths in Korea. But this one, guys, this one is special. Right up there. If not, I'm going to say it. It is number one. It's the best I've had. Not just the broth, the meat, the flavor, so damn good.